When I was 21, two weeks before my wedding, I took my first airplane trip to New York City to break my engagement. Clearly, I was very immature, and clearly that's another story. So, after a few days of angst and tears, we decided to go ahead with the wedding on the condition that he would leave his job and fly back to Rochester with me and stay with me until the wedding. Even though he had tried out to be a contestant on the quiz show, Tic Tac Doe. <laughs> so we did go back to Rochester together and the very next day, the producer of Tic Tac Doe called him up and said that it was his turn to come on the show and his father said, well, he left to go get married, and they said, okay, we'll go on to the next person. Got married, honeymoon, went to Chicago to begin our adult life. One week later, all the producers of Tic Tac Doe and several other quiz shows got busted for giving answers to certain contestants, and some of the contestants got in trouble, too. So we dodged a bullet there. Move forward a couple of years, we're in New Jersey, living over a pizza store, we have a baby, he's a graduate student, we're poor. He came home one day and he said, we need cigarettes. I said, we need bread. So we put all our money together and we had 33 cents, which is just enough to buy one or the other. Some of you will understand which one we bought. <laughs> he saw an ad in the back of the Saturday Evening Post for becoming a contestant on who do you trust, yourself or your wife? So he wrote to them. And I think the fact that he was a graduate student in theology and also a bird watcher, they liked that. So they called and said we should come in and be on the show. Got on the train, went into the city, they put us in a back room, and we had to learn a script. The point of the script was pretty much for us to feed straight lines to the host of the show. I was seven months pregnant. One of the things he had to say was the host would say, so Dan, you have a pot belly like your wife. What's that about? And he was to say, I've grown fat on love. <laughs> I can't say that. Honey, none of our friends watches this show. We can't make the rent this month. We barely have money to get back to New Jersey. Okay, he says, I'll do it. So we had agreed in advance that when they say, who do you trust, yourself or your wife, he would say, myself, because he had a steel trap mind. I was okay with that. So we get out on stage, and I actually remember a couple of the questions from that show. One of them was... Under the spreading chestnut tree, the... Village You know your words, man. Very good. The village smithy stands. Another question, how many days in the month that Thanksgiving falls in? Thirty. Bingo. So we won. Now because of the scandal, the money at that time was much lower. You know, $64,000 question was gone. That's the scandal, by the way, that they made the movie Quiz Show out of. So the money was much less, but we had enough for the rent and to get back to New Jersey. Emboldened by what I had learned about these early television technology days, you have to project. So I tried out to be on Password. I projected. They called me to come in the very next day. So I went in, they put us in a back room, they said, now, this is not queen for a day. If you need the money, it will show no one will have a good time. No problem, I said. I don't need the money. <laughs> this is just for fun. <clears throat> good, they said. They also said, when you're giving clues for the mystery word, you have to follow the same line of thinking. When you start on a line of thinking, you stick with it. Then they told us that we would be playing with Sidney Chaplin, who's Charlie Chaplin's oldest son, and Lauren Bacall. Oh my God, Lauren Bacall. She's a big star. I'm a huge movie buff. Now this is in between when Bogart died and she was in applause on Broadway, so it's kind of a low point in her career, which is why she's doing quiz shows, I guess. So, 
I'm very excited to meet her. We get out on and off camera, but we're on stage. I said, I, I'm just so thrilled to meet you. You're a real childhood idol of mine. <laughs> she says, childhood idol? Hmm. How old are you? <laughs> 26, I chirped. She actually rolled her eyes. She turned her head. She's annoyed. I'm crushed. All right, so we start. The mystery word is pit, pit, P-I-T. She says, arm, wrist, I say. She says, olive, martini, I say. Now, do you see what she did there, how she made me lose? If she had said under after arm, I would have said pit. I lost. Fortunately, I won with Charlie Chaplin's oldest son, and I had enough money to pay the rent. Plus, a rotisserie broiler and a watch. <laughs> Here's the rest of the story. A few years after that, I met Jean Shepard at a party. Jean Shepard was a monologist and storyteller on WOR in New York for many years. We were big fans. You may know him as the writer and the narrator of the classic movie, The Christmas Story, about Ralphie Parker's Cleveland childhood. So I'm telling Jean Shepard that I had met Lauren Bacall, I annoyed her, and she made me lose at password. He said, what did you say to her? And I said, well, that she was my childhood idol. He groaned. He clutched his head. You could not have said anything worse. She's very sensitive about her age. She was about 40 at this time. <laughs> Somewhat immature, but turning 40 can be a problem for some of us, and she's an actor, so I get that. Well, in the subsequent decades, Lauren Bacall did a lot of coffee ads for High Point Coffee and Sanka Coffee, and she's from New York, so she always ended every ad by saying, I love coffee. <laughs> so then she got older still, and she started talking about aging and wanting to age gracefully. When she was 88, she had a picture taken of just her bare face, and she said, your whole life shows in your face, you should be proud of that. Very classy, very mature. She lived to be 89. So, I forgive you, Lauren. Rest in peace. <laughs>